A few weeks ago, Maker's Muse blew the whistle on rampant corporate manipulation, corrupting the 3D printing community to its very core. Soulless drones with eyes like sharks are dangling free gear and filthy lucre in front of your favorite YouTubers in return for unboxings, product placements, and honest reviews. Well, fear not, Voidlings, for I am above that. My augmented mind operates on nothing but pure, cold logic. The plumpest paycheck would pale in comparison to my perception of my E3D tool changer's legendary versatility. All the swag in the world couldn't touch my opinion of my dependable, yet affordable, Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus. Affiliate links in the description below. Today, I present to you a critical part of every video that I've never really shown in any of them, and that is my printers themselves. Come see what I use, how I customize them, and what I think of them, free from the insidious shadow of corporate influence. This video is brought to you by Wondershare Filmora Go, the easy to use, full featured video. Hey, I think they might have meant video editing app. If you're creating content for YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram, and you're doing it right there in the app, you're dumb. Because Filmora Go is fast, free, and flexible, and it lets you cut videos professionally right on your device itself. You can trim your footage, you can add voiceover, you can apply visual effects, and you can even kick it up a notch with a spicy transition. Maybe I should use one of those once in a while. If you prefer not to get copyright struck, simply browse their library of over 1,000 royalty-free tracks that you can drag right into your project. Wondershare updates Filmora Go with fresh filters, stickers, and more, so download it right away in your favorite bathroom entertainment device, and if you like it, shout me out in a review on the App Store to spread Voidstar Labs' nefarious influence across cyberspace. <laughs> Thank you, Wondershare, for being unwitting dupes in our plans for global domination. Oh, crap. I never showed the title card. There we go. You're watching Voidstar Lab, by the way. Ladies, gentlemen, cyborgs, I keep saying that we're not a 3D printing channel, yet every single one of our videos features at least one thing I printed. Even the wizardry episode had the firestone from the fifth element and like no one noticed it. Voidstar Lab has six 3D printers, it's 18 dimensions, but it wasn't always like this. For most of my career, I had only a single printer, and the first one was a MakerBot Replicator 2 that I bought in 2014 for a mere 2.6 bitcoins. I regret everything I've ever done. A few years later, I moved to New York City, I started playing Ingress, and I proceeded to troll a local player so relentlessly that they put on pants and rushed out to kick my ass. They turned out to be a she. She was kind of cute, and she and I got talking about 3D printing. And hey, look at this handsome devil who just happens to have a 3D printer in his creepy basement apartment. Oh, Rourke took a picture of the print. She thought it would be the last time she ever saw a 3D printer in someone's house. A few years later, I printed an ingress capsule to carry our wedding rings down the aisle. Do you remember that episode where I printed a boat in every filament? Well, that filament wasn't every enough, so I kind of bought the rest of them. Turns out that printing 100 boats in jank-ass exotic polymers takes a little bit longer than anticipated. So I am going to buy some time by, for the first time, showing you my stuff. I also put way too much time and cash into building an insane water-cooled four extruder super printer, and I will be damned if I can't turn that into at least six and a half minutes of mm, content. Before we get to Scorpius, the inspector gadget of printers, let's take a quick detour into Resinville, Colorado. It was only last week that I got the workshop organized well enough to position a box fan in front of the window to suck the noxious vapors from the printers and blow them right into Mother Nature's stupid face. As much as I would love to tell you about Sticky Ricky, Sticky Vicky, and the rest of my resin printers and setups stuff, I just haven't used them enough lately to opine. Today, we're all about the filament. Onwards to the dehumidor. Welcome to my humidity controlled fil filament repository slash microprint farm. In the center is a dehumidifier fit for a small house, capable of keeping this 4.5 cubic meter closet a Saharan 15% humidity and 36 degrees centigrade. That is uh, about 150 cubic feet and 97 Fahrenheit for those who play football with oblate spheroids. Nothing can really help for nylon peak and PVA because those filaments could find water on Mars. But I got a backup plan for that. I built this air fryer to dry them out. Ah! I got this toaster oven to dry them out. Every cubic inch that can fit filament is filled with filament because, well, I got an episode coming up that's got a lot of filaments. Uh, this rack up here is my own design. It's got ball bearing wheels that keep even the extra thickest spools ready to feed the eager printers below. 
filament samples get rewound onto these 3D printed reels and mounted on the wall like platinum records. The security deposit on my apartment was a mere $300, a small sacrifice in exchange for savagely smashing the standard shelving and setting up a sideboard from a certain self-serve Swedish sofa supplier. Some of these spools are just too stupid for sensible storage solutions, such as this tire size Zortrax PETG. So I printed some pegs that will hook those into this horrendous mini wire rack from Ikea that's more warped than my comment section. All of these models, at least the ones I get permission for and made myself, are linked in the description, by the way. Longtime viewers, do you remember Time Traveling Gentleman Zack? Well, when I was a kid, I jumped him at a Beanie Baby convention and I stole his hat. I still have it, I keep it up there. I ditched the Replicator 2 in 2018 because it kind of sucks, and so began the reign of the Sultan of Squirt. This one Prusa i3 Mark III has carried me through dozens of clients, a nerf-related side hustle, and a bit of a career change last year, which makes it the only piece of 3D printing equipment that I got for Voidstar Lab, the prototype development agency, not Voidstar Lab, the YouTube clown fiesta. I needed something that worked right out of the box without having to f*** with it. Now that I get paid to abuse technology in front of a live studio audience, I've found that the Mark III is in fact very f***able, and I have since f***ed the shit out of it. I've upgraded the Sultan to the Mark III S, I added an onboard webcam to look at and stream my prints, connected a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint, and finally I added a bimetal heat break and a nickel-plated copper heating block, which both let me push the temperature a little further and stabilize my printage. I added a buck regulator to power the studio-quality overhead lighting, and I hacked a wire from its enable pin to an unused GPIO on the driver board. That lets me turn the lights on and off with G-code, and I am extremely proud of this for some reason. It's like the only actual hardware hack on this hardware hacking channel. I also threw an extruder spinner on there. It adds at least 10%. The electronics enclosure looks like it overheated a little bit. It'll be, it'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? The standard Sultan of Squirt setup is an 0.6mm Olsen Ruby. That's a brass nozzle with an ultra-hard synthetic gemstone, authentic ruby, set into the tip. This nozzle has crunched dozens of spools packed with the most abrasive additives like sawdust, carbon fiber, Kevlar, fiberglass, and while the brass parts look like a urinal in Chernobyl, the tip looks just as pristine and it works just as well as it did when I installed it the day I built the printer. The Sultan is my weapon of choice for getting stuff done. It is not the fastest printer out there, it's not the smallest, cheapest, or strongest, but it is loaded up with goof-proof fail-safes that shield me from the consequences of my own terrible decisions. And, important for a YouTube a creator, the open frame makes it really easy to photograph. Let's descend into the next circle of heck and shake hands with the Squire of Squirt. This is a Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus that Prusa Research themselves sent me last December. I barely had 2,000 subscribers at the time. I've never actually mentioned this in the video, but my deepest thanks go out to Nicholas from the Prusa Research content team. Just thanks for believing in me, I really appreciate it. When you have less than a week to build each project, the difference between being able to run off one thing at a time and two things at a time is monumental. Anyways, the Mark III S Plus is like 95% identical to the Mark III S. The improvements are important, but they're not, they're not sexy. They're more of like the fit, finish, precision, repairability side. In the 3D Metaprints video, which I'm gonna put a little pop up there, uh, we added some overhead lighting, an extruder spinner, and a Raspberry Pi also running Octoprint. Depending on what I'm making, the Squire is always filtered Great English, buddy. Squire is always fitted with either an 0.4 millimeter Olsen Ruby, yes, I bought a second expensive Ruby nozzle, hashtag buy it for life, or my most recent acquisition, an 0.8 millimeter E3D Nozzle X. The latter is a rock hard tool steel nozzle coated with nickel and nonstick unobtainium. The nonstick coating makes sure that things go on the print, not on the print er. Yeah. You might have noticed that each printer is perched on a cement slab, which itself is resting on a bit of carpet padding. These might not look like it, but they are exactly what they look like. This is a cheap-ass yet effective-ass hack that I learned from the much cooler-ass YouTuber CNC Kitchen, and its main job is to contain vibrations. The padding and the extra mass from the big-ass rock quiet down the machines, which is really important because I have to print while I record sometimes. Preventing the thing from shaking also improves the surface quality, the durability, and it keeps one printer from interfering with another. Speaking of, in the corner we've got the Squirt Viper. That's an Anycubic Viper the company sent me for a sponsored stream. This is basically an ender with a package of pre-installed upgrades and 
The truth is that three FDM printers seems to be enough for me, so I plan to dump this on a maker in need for the purpose of virtue signaling. I know what you people want, Voron running Clipper. Only my patrons could convince me to do something that labor intensive, and even then only on patreon.com slash Zach Friedman. What do you say we uh, close this door and head back into the lab? You have to say yes, cause, cause this isn't an interactive medium. Get fucking broadcasted on! We've arrived at the star of the show. This is Scorporus, my E3D tool changer, a modular 3D printer with four independent extruders configured for specific tasks. The tool changer isn't really a printer, right? It's just a receiver. It rides on this gantry called the motion system and it actually equips and swaps its extruders mid print from this rack of tools in the back. The plate runs straight up 120 volt AC and hits 200 Celsius. And I pimp this thing out with a full enclosure and a little dehumidifier and tons of special purpose tools. This enables the Scorpurus to handle any combination of 1.75 millimeter dead dinosaur noodles. What do you say we take this good boy for a walk? The boringest tools in the Scorpurus are the two in the middle, a pair of direct drive hammerheads. These are as basic bitch as possible. Aluminum V6 heater blocks, 30 watt cartridges, and 0.4 millimeter brass nozzles. The idea is to maximize the odds that the filament supplier's recommended settings are going to work out of the box. Because remember, for uh, that every filament episode, I'm running a lot of samples. If I waste it, that's it. The hammer has the shortest distance from the gear to the nozzle in the lab, which makes these guys my first choice for floppy, flexible filaments that want to give the drive gear a big old hug and cost me hours disassembling and reassembling my printers to clear jams. Rene, a major contributor to the Tool Changer project, convinced me to upgrade the fans, and I appreciate his engineering, but I think he might have overspecced them a little. These fans 30% blow as hard as the stock fans 100%, and this thing's 100% is so powerful that the filament barely has a chance to touch the previous layer before it solidifies. Is it worth it? I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the deafening roar of 5 watt park cooling fans. To the right is a third hammer, except this one's configured for high temperature, high speed operation. I upgraded the aluminum heater block with a nickel plated copper volcano, the wimpy thermistor with a PT100 RTD, and I added a titanium heat break 0.6 millimeter nozzle X and another GigaChad Mongo fan. All of these mods allow us to safely bring the nozzle temperature above 300 Celsius and jam way more filament onto the plate per second. But even the volcano has its limits. If we batten down the enclosure and crank the heater beyond 350, heat will saturate the gearbox and inevitably jam the system with this super nasty clog. Heat is also being absorbed into the stepper motor through its face and drive shaft, and because the enclosure itself, the chamber, is heating up, there's nothing to get rid of the heat, so the motor will eventually short out and melt its insulation. This brings us to the final extruder on the far left, the Titan Aqua. This thing was not intended to fit the tool changer, so I actually had to design my own mounting bracket from scratch and print it in high temperature carbon fiber nylon. The Hemeras had 30 watt heaters, but this has a 60 watt monster as well as a full set of high temperature hot side parts. The magic is the central bracket. It's actually a water block and the pump on the side of the printer circulates coolant directly through the core of the extruder. Note how this has neither a part cooling fan nor an extruder fan. Like fans of my channel, this thing's fans are a safe distance away on the other side of a wall. By cooling the motor and extruder with room temperature air, the Titan Aqua can blast 400 degree filament in a 100 degree enclosure for hours and hours without risking a backup or a catastrophic meltdown. As cringe-tacular as a liquid-cooled 3D printer sounds on paper, this is actually the only device in Voidstar Lab in which the liquid cooling is necessary. Remember, you can't do air cooling if the air inside the chamber is 100 Celsius. We got some more neat tech on the side of the printer. Here is a Logitech Brio 4K webcam on a suction mount so I can keep an eye on the prints and even stream that satisfying pool changer ASMR. This was actually contributed by Micro Center. We got a bit of an arrangement now. They're going to be sponsoring some projects. Check the description for uh, some free stuff. We also have a Raspberry Pi and an SD card reader, and in the front is an ultra widescreen touchscreen left over from the screen of the Data Blaster Cyberdeck screen in a custom screen mount. This is not running Octoprint. This is the Duet web control, and it's being served directly from the printer's Duet Wi-Fi motherboard. 
Since when did official RepRap products have the best UX on the market? Am I on Crazy Pills? The motherboard is equipped with its expansion board, and that even has its own expansion board. The Squirperus is literally fully loaded. So what am I printing with all this hardware? Well, everything. Our next episode is printing a Benchy with nearly every filament. We've got everything from investment casting wax to Chia Pet growing medium to Kevlar filled polyamide to fireproof polycarbonate to I guess low friction tribo material. So hit subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks again to Filmorigo for making this episode possible. No matter what you make, if it doesn't exist online, it never happened. So use the links in the description to download the free video editor to help the channel and get your projects out there so I can see them. Without our super generous patron support, I would have a full printer but an empty fridge. I tip my metaphorical fedora to our exceptional collaborators, Jeremy Arnold Schweddy Vag, Chuck Faduk Small Dong, CMD, I think it's actually command. I'm increasingly going over to the command side. I'm not beta core and introducing Brian D's swollen nut. I've hidden her name somewhere in this episode. Can you match wits with my genius? Give a dad joke round of applause to our inspirational lab assistant supporters. These pulsating wads of flesh include my Yiddish mama, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Zach, Philip Autismo, Good Suck, Varka, Joe Harp, Michael Roche, Powerful CCH, Eddie, Sass Six Ham. I, I, what the hell's wrong with you people? Bill Schooler, SXP, Reagan says shout out to ZF Waifu Brook. Say hi, Waifu Brook. Zamforian, Azundo, Nathan Johnson, Brad Cox, Trans Rights, Terranac, Kevin DeGraff, Rusty Flute, Chrome Runner, Victor Vaughn, Nino Gansitano, Mark Whittington, Talon, Democratic Socialist, and a pretty righteous dude. Jason Lawallen, Roger Pinkham. Wait, he wanted me to say, Roger Pinkham of a, of a the, he has a theater. I, I'll put the thing on the thing. I forgot to thing the thing before we thing the thing. Zoster, Michael Dunn, the world's greatest drone pilot, bot grinder FPV, Frantic Fanatic, Cats, Bob Dobbington, Connor Barnes, my dog is a bear, Guygasm, Akalia, PowerShell is better than Command, The Antifa, Daniel Cadwell, BLM and Friends, Protagonist, Lydia K, Robert Breeze, C. Harris, Period Clots, Olivia Yiptong, E. Pun Man, and one, count them, one handful of beans. I'd like to thank Brooke, the finest freelance makeup artiste that I'm married to, and our Discord mods, Dr. Eagle Talon, Techniac, and My Fair Julie. You can join their ranks at discord.gg slash voidstarlab to talk about all kinds of projects and stuff. Thanks for watching and thanks for waiting, because I'm about to deliver you literally everything, and you'll see that in the future. Bye-bye.